If you were to travel the world and ask people what their favorite color is, the most common answer you'll get is blue, which is not surprising when you consider that some of the most beautiful places in the world are defined by blue skies and calm blue water. While blue isn't my favorite color, it is one of my favorite color on watches, and this particular watch is a whole lot of blue. Now there are a few reviews of it already online, but most of those are on the silver dial with blue hands, not much on this blue dial version, which is really a pity because it is fantastic looking and really deserves more attention. It's become known as the Guanxin Nomos Lambda Homage. Guanxin is a Chinese company that can be found on Gearbest and AliExpress. They have made a name for themselves in the affordable watch community by producing some great, but decently priced homage watches. And this watch is no different, being an homage to the Nomos Lambda. So right off the bat, you're either going to love or hate that Bauhaus-inspired design. But beyond that dial, the watch offers a few good surprises. The case is stainless steel and 42 millimeters wide, with a very rounded design and pretty short lugs. It tapers a bit as it heads to the rear. The finishing is decent, and the only rough edge is on the back where the crystal meets the case back. And that was 42 millimeters without the crown, but it is 45 millimeters with. The crown is signed and is a decent size. And while from the front it's not obvious, the crown does stick out a bit from the case when the case begins to taper. Which may look a little off, but it does help when you try to wind it. Lug to lug, the watch is just under 50 millimeters, and it sits about 13 and a half millimeters tall. It uses a 20 millimeter bracelet and weighs a decent 113 grams with that metal bracelet. The entire design of the case is rather minimal, and it tends to draw your eyes towards that crystal and the dial underneath. The crystal is sapphire and has a slightly domed shape to it. But all of that is minor details compared to the dial itself. While the more popular silver dial version is subtly beautiful, this one is much more bold and striking, with a beautiful dark metallic blue finish. Even with a rather busy dial, your eyes can't help but be drawn towards that blue color. Now everything on the dial is painted on, so nothing is applied. So it does make for a rather flat looking dial, with the exception of the very edges of the dial, where the chapter ring meets the case, it does look like it's curving down. The dial is divided into three parts. You have the main dial with its stick hands for both hour and minutes. They're rather simple and flat metallic looking, with the minute hand going almost to the chapter ring. Below that, you have the small second hand, with a date window cut out on the very bottom, which I honestly find to be an odd choice. Partially because the original didn't have a date window, and partially because I think the dial would look much, much cleaner without it. And without a date window, you could make the watch just a little bit thinner because I think it is a little too tall for its own good. Now, I think the reason there is a date window is because there aren't too many movements that fit this complication, so they just used what they had. Also, the date window doesn't always quite line up with the date wheel below it. It's a minor detail, but it might annoy some. But on the plus side, it is hackable. The upper half of the dial is taken up by a rather large power reserve subdial, which is a very nice touch for a watch at this price. Now, unless you're in very low light conditions, the silver hands against the blue dial offer up a nice contrast and make it very easy to read. Now, while the overall design of the dial is borrowed, it is nicely done. It is beautiful, complex, yet still easy to read. On the left, you have the Guanxin logo, and the right, you have a statement listing that it has a 35 hour energy reserve. Now, there are a few odd things here. The first is that it says 35 Stunden, or it would if I could pronounce that correctly, but it's 35 hours in German. 
So why it's 35 hours is a question, but I'll get to that when I talk about the movement in a little bit. The other thing is right above that, it says the phrase energy reserve. But I find it odd that they're mixing German and English, and English without a space as well. Now this is a bit nitpicky, but I always find it kind of interesting to see what they put on the watch. And there is more as you go to the back, which is an exhibition case back with Sapphire. Now on that case back, you have the typicals, which does include a listing of five atmosphere water resistance. But the last two things listed are Terprog and Riolistant, which I have no idea what that is, what language that is, if it's even a language. My best guess is that it's a horrible misspelling of waterproof and resistant. But why it's there, why they're both together, I have absolutely no idea. But these are minor points, and they really shouldn't dissuade you from an otherwise good watch. Now the movement itself is rather plain and unfinished looking. Accuracy wise, it could use some improvement as well. It loses about 11 seconds a day, although regulating it really shouldn't be too difficult. I believe the movement is supposed to be a Hangzhou 2B00, which is listed to have a 36 hour power reserve, which partially explains why the subdial maxes out at 35 hours. But you can wind it a little past that point, and when I did, I found it to be a bit more than 36 hours. Quite a bit more, actually. On a whim, I decided to check and see how accurate the power reserve meter is. So I ran a test, and checked on the watch periodically, recording how much time had elapsed, and how much power it indicated it had left. Overall, the results were rather linear, but the watch always seemed to report a little less power than it actually had. I was actually a little surprised when I looked at the results and saw that it ran for almost 49 hours. In fact, I thought I'd screwed something up, so I decided to repeat it. And on the second attempt, it ran for 48 and a half hours. Now I haven't heard this mentioned anywhere else, so I don't know if this is normal or if maybe my movement is just a little different which usually getting something a little different is a bad thing. But in this case, it's a pleasant surprise. The bracelet it comes with is this mesh one, and it's decent. It may be a little bit lightweight, but it has a pretty good clasp, and it wears okay. Overall, I think it wears a little larger than you would expect. But I think that's mostly because it just feels a little tall. If there was one thing I could change, it would be to make it a little thinner. But to be honest, I didn't really care for it on that bracelet. I've just never really been a fan of that style of bracelet. And while I do love the larger link shark mesh I have on my ProMaster, the Milanese style never really appealed to me. Some of it's the looks, and some of it is how it wears, where the excess of the bracelet is up on the inside and lays against your wrist. But with that blue dial, this watch looks fantastic on any strap you could put on it, even when the colors sometimes clash. But my favorite is this steel gray NATO by Barton. Great strap, and I love how it looks against the blue. Now prices on watches from Gearbest and AliExpress tend to fluctuate, but this one should be in the mid 60s. Gearbest did send me this watch to review, and at the moment I believe they are the lowest price. But if you're interested, shop around to make sure. But I think it's a good watch for what you're getting. It's stunningly beautiful, sapphire, and you don't often see a power reserve on a sub $100 watch. Overall, I think it's a great watch for the price. Other than the date window and the uh, questionable grammar, my only other concern is that I think it might be just a little bit too tall. And while I really love wearing it, I'm not really sure where it fits in style-wise. I think it's somewhere between dress and casual, or it is at least when I wear it on this NATO. But as usual, let me know what you think about it in the comments, especially if you happen to have one. I'm really curious to know if that 48-hour power reserve is just a fluke on mine. But thanks for joining me, and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.